I've never podcasted with a 40 year old woman before. Yeah. But this week on Close Talkers, we watched season six, episode 21 The Diplomats Club. <laughs> Hello, Katie. Hello, Derek. Happy birthday. Thank you. So what did you think of the Diplomats Club? Why didn't they call it the pilot? Because there already was an episode called the pilot. Why didn't they call it the bet? The black friend. I think this this definitely could qualify on a list of like episodes that were poorly named. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit, I think. What did you think of it? Eh, it was It was kind of fine. I want to show you. I wrote, oof, George, George, oof, George, period. George, exclamation mark. Uh, George is, is officially a terrible person. <clears throat> it made me so uncomfortable. I went and I, I cut my nails. <laughs> so, like we've talked before about how Larry David finds racial uncomfortableness funny. Mm-hmm. And through the lens of looking back... Uh, 30 years, that uncomfortableness, uh, what's the right way to say this? Like, if it was the uncomfortableness, like in in Curb, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's, you're laughing at how it's uncomfortable, whereas this was, you were laughing at the, like, the, the, you you were supposed to be laughing at the actions. Yes, I know what you mean. Not the uncomfortableness. It very much felt like I was watching Larry David on screen. Oh, yeah, big time. And I don't know, maybe it was, maybe because it wasn't really in George's character. I feel like, I know George is Larry David, but I feel like he would have had the awkward conversation with Mr. Morgan and the picture, and then just like sat at the cafe and like fretted about it. Mm. And really, it turns out that Mr. Morgan doesn't care and like everything's fine. So would it surprise you to find out that the genesis of this storyline was... Larry David mentioning to Tom Gamble and Max Prost that Tom Wright looks like Sugar Ray Leonard. Oh, this is a Gamble and Prost joint. This is a Gamble and Prost joint. Uh, of course. It was also directed by uh, Andy Ackerman. It aired on May 4th, 1995. Totally off topic here. When did May 4th become Star Wars Day? Whoever first thought of that Thinks they're so clever. But that, it, it wasn't until 2015. Yeah, probably. Like, I, I was, I was I, so into Star Wars as a kid. What? When was, did Elf was, on the Shelf become a thing? It wasn't ever a thing. And all of a sudden, it's like this, this longstanding tradition. It's like, no, it came out of nowhere. It doesn't mean anything. It was made up. It's all made up. The parents don't need another thing to do. <laughs> You know how I was complaining about how I have no culture? <laughs> yes. Are you going to make Elf on the Shelf your culture? No, but I think Elf on the Shelf is an example of like secular, uh, white, non-denominational culture. Yeah. But you already have Santa. I don't know. I, I don't get it, really. I, I think it's- uh, I guess parents don't get to actually do anything, right? Like Santa gets all the credit mm. and- Parents with, I guess, time on their hands and nothing better to do want to stay up at night and move a toy around the house and be like, the elf is watching you. I don't know. I don't don't know what the rules are. Isn't it just a way to keep your kids in line for the entire month of December? You can't just be like... Yeah, but Santa watches you all year. Vulture.com ranked this as the 108th best episode. Uh, Screen Crush had it at 152. Mm. IMDb ranked it as an 8.1 out of 10. But that only brings it into a hundred and twenty second. Okay, that's in terms of, that's fair. Uh, rankings. Um, one thing that I noticed for the first time is that Seinfeld has a TV fourteen rating. Oh, uh, due to sex and smoking. Was any of that in this episode? No, but I think it's the entire series, oh. right? Like, uh, you see. Newman smoke at one point, and uh, Elaine gets some sometimes. <laughs> a tiny bit of smoking and a tiny bit of sex. 
better not watch this until you're 14. Yeah. Let's throw it back to last week when I asked you if you remembered this episode. Jerry runs around to different airports trying to have sex with a woman before she gets on a plane. Oh. So? I guess I nailed it. Um, You thought Jerry was running around airports in Manhattan. The important part is I knew he was trying to have sex in an airport. <laughs> Yeah. Or go on a date at an airport. That w- that was the so, last thing I wrote was, are they going to do it right there? That, that was the plan, I guess. Hmm. So let's say everything worked out. Uh-huh. They could have left the airport. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't going to spend three hours I thought, I thought in they were the gonna airport. Spend, I, I thought they were going to spend the entire time at the airport. I mean, what is what? What's entailed in this diplomats club? So, the diplomats club is a play on uh, American Airlines ambassadors club. So it's like the frequent flyer lounge. So it probably, like, I mean, it's like it's not it's a, a bar ish type place. It's a lounge. It's yeah. not like it's a hotel. It's like the lobby of a hotel. Yeah, you can't have sex in the lobby of a hotel. Just watch me. You can't have sex in the library. You can't. You can't have sex in the library in the lobby of a hotel. There we go. You can't have sex in the lobby of a hotel. You can't have sex in the lobby of a hotel. You can't have sex in the lobby of a hotel. You can't have sex. (laughs) You can't have sex in the lobby of a hotel. Okay, I'm going to read the synopsis. Mr. Pitt thinks Elaine is trying to kill him. Jerry's act gets sidetracked by an airline pilot. Kramer wagers with a Texan at the airport. So, who were the guest stars? So we had several returning guest stars. We had Tom Wright playing the role of Mr. Morgan. We had Ian Abercrombie playing Justin Pitt. We had Robert Hooks playing Joe Temple. And uh, Deanna Theodore playing his daughter, Remy Temple. Uh, however, some of the new guest stars, we had uh, Deborah Joe Ripper. Rupp? Yeah, I can't read my own writing. Playing Katie. Mm-hmm. She's obviously from uh, 200 episodes of that 70s show. She's out of my league and big, starring Tom Hanks. Yes, but what has she been in? I know she's out of your league, but what's she been in? Uh, <laughs> I could, I could, I could bag Deborah Jo Rupp or Deborah Jo Ripper. <laughs> That's her stripper name. We had O'Neill Compton, who played Earl the cowboy. Mm. He was in uh, Nixon, Little Big League. And the movie that sounds like a porno, Deep Impact. Didn't we have a returning guest star in The Exterminator? Oh, I didn't write him down. Oh, Derek, that's racist. He doesn't have a picture on IMDb. <laughs> that's racist. Um, and then uh, Bourbon Wagford played Bridget. Sorry, what's her name? Bur- Bourbon? <laughs> Bur- Berlin? I can't read my writing. So it might not be Bourbon Wagford. It might be like Barbara Wegman. Her last name is definitely Wagford. Bourbon Wagford. I think it's B E R B E N. Bourbon. Bourbon. Berta. <laughs> yeah, Bourbon Wagford. Berta Wagford. Okay, I'll cut all this out. No. Berta Wagford, uh, who played Bridget. She was in a single episode of Seinfeld. And the movie Attack of the 50 Foot Woman, where she played Alien Woman number one. Hmm. So the stand up starts with Jerry calling uh, airport lounge access a scam. It's $150 a year to sit around, drink coffee, eat snacks, and wait. And that's exactly what you're going to do on the flight. I mean, I guess it is nicer than sitting in the airport, not drinking coffee, eating snacks, and. Well, you can get those too. Yep, they're not included. (laughs) He goes, how do I get into the I got all my luggage club? I do think that, uh, you know, nailing the basics is sometimes more important than the little extras. Mm. So there was recently a news story where a couple or a a man got denied boarding on a flight because his name was Doug. His name was Douglas on his passport and his airline ticket was Doug. And they're like, no, it's not you. Mm. And, like, hours and hours of phone calls have been made and da-da-da. And at the end, like, Porter Airlines was like, nope, not you. Go home. Do you remember when that nearly happened to me? Because you, your your middle name wasn't your last name? Your last name wasn't your middle name? So I have two middle names. 
and Aeroplan, for some reason, may, gave me two last names. But mm-hmm. I didn't notice because I don't I didn't pay attention to yes what they you know when they, in their communications they're like hello Catherine and then I had booked us flights filled out my name properly and then put in my Aeroplan number and it retroactively changed the last name field mm. to include one of my middle names. But I, again, I didn't notice because it prints out your full name mm-hmm. all in caps on, you know, your boarding pass. And then we almost didn't get on the flight and I cried. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was allowed. Maybe he should have cried. Did he try that? Doug should have cried. Yeah. Doug doesn't cry. Doug don't cry. <laughs> I should never have changed my middle name. Anyway. Thank you for not saying last name. <laughs> I mean, I've I've done lounge access. I mean, it's... Uh, marginally nicer than uh, than sitting at the gate the entire time. I would only do it if it's included. I would never pay extra for it. We don't typically go to a restaurant at the airport, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. When we travel, either we have lounge access for some reason, or we sit at the gate. Like, we're not ordering a meal at a restaurant. Yeah, I'm uh, with our I, luggage and stuff. I don't know. I think I'd be too nervous about like, yeah missing the flight even if unless i had like a lot of time i did it at the halifax airport with a friend Mm. but the halifax airport is so empty that like if any flight is boarding you can see it and you're like oh the person would see the the two people waiting in the restaurant still and be like hey we're boarding now you'd be like oh i'm sorry (laughs) elaine is quitting she's marching in is this um job for mr pitt really that bad I think she is, her talents are not being used. That's true. And she doesn't want to like go around the city getting socks or, you know, doing all this sort of silly busy work for a mm. man child. So I could see why she would want to quit, but she doesn't have anything lined up as far as I know. It's true, but she seems kind of angry. Yeah. She's also wearing a riding outfit. Works for me. You can do the march in? The march out, not as good. Think all the money you're leaving on the table. What do you think about George's plan to uh, take a picture with his boss and put it on his desk to, uh, uh, what's the phrase? Curry his favor? Curry? Curry his favor? Jerry says, don't you think that's a bit transparent? And George goes, I hope so. Um, this, George thinks that his boss is dumb. That he's not going to see through this transparent attempt to suck up to him and be like, ugh. It's a it's a terrible plan from the start, and it makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> Can you curry something other than favor? Chicken? It, like, is George in uh, trouble of losing his job? I don't think he does anything, so maybe he is. Well, his secretary does everything. It's true. Does she still work for him? We don't see her. Yeah. But it's not canon that she doesn't work for him. But he just has the impression that he's out of favor with mm. Mr. Morgan. Maybe it's because he always wax, acts weird around him. That is also possible. I really don't want to talk about the George storyline anymore. Let's just finish it. And I brought up side-by-sides of Tom Wright and Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> what do you think? They share I, I, one I, I, characteristic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think this makes me feel uncomfortable. So... Not talking about the reasons why George is trying to do it, um, but George is trying to make friends. George is trying to appear that he has friends, right? Well, I think I think George is making, regardless of whether they are good attempts, George is making attempts to make friends with people. And I think as a a, a grown man in your, um, however old they supposed to be, like twenty something, thirty, thirties, I think, uh, you know. On the, on the on the front nine of middle aged, it's it's hard to like organically make friends. He could just not be a weirdo and make friends at work. That is also possible. He has, he has hobbies. He plays basketball. I'm sure there's guys uh, shooting Jimmy. hoops uh, that that he can make friends with. He swims at the health club. Um, you know, other things. <laughs> what other hobbies does George have? I was about to say they don't have hobbies, and then I thought about the basketball. The basketball, that's what I call it. Um, I would argue he's not trying to make friends. He's trying to take a photo with a black person. That is true. If he were, he realizes he doesn't have any friends, and so he's like, how do, how, do I, how do I get a friend so I can take a photo with them and use them for this purpose? He doesn't actually want the friend. No. So one thing I didn't understand, it's a very small detail. 
Uh, Jerry's flying to Ithaca for the day to do an mm-hmm. act, fly back, meet Bridget at the Diplomats Club. Kramer shows up at the cafe, the cafe, the the diner. Mm-hmm. To take him to the airport. Take him to the airport. Says, where's your luggage? He says, all I need is this, just going for the day. Just got to stop at the pharmacy, pick up a toothbrush. Why does he need a toothbrush? Why do you need a toothbrush? Is it just to freshen up before the sex at the Diplomats Club? Maybe, but you could get some gum at the airport. No? A swish with uh, some vodka? I don't know. I, I think, like... Is he going pa- to like, fall asleep on the 45-minute flight? Freshening up. Like, like if you're just going to brush your teeth, like, like <laughs> throw in some deodorant. Do a little yeah. <laughs> uh, horse bath. Like, come on. He's been stinking all day. Like, when, whenever you get off a flight, regardless of how long it is, yeah. you're pretty stinky. So George is trying to get uh, Kramer to... He shows him the photo of Mr. Morgan, and he says, who does this look like? He's like, I don't know. And he goes, it's not salt. It's, Kramer says, Pepper Johnson, who's a real person, mm-hmm. NFL player. Does he have any um, passing resemblance to Sugar nope. Ray Leonard? Mm. Do we know that why Kramer's not supposed to be betting? Was there a reason? I don't think so. I think it just shows up in this mm-hmm. uh, episode. So Jerry has this helper. It's a manager, yeah. Katie. Mm-hmm. She's like the second most annoying Katie I know. I'm going to start saying, now I don't want you to freak out in front of the most benign things. So the genesis of this storyline is Jerry Seinfeld went on tour with his manager. Handler. That's what I'm talking Handler. That's the word I was looking for. Sure. Uh, and at one point they mentioned, hey, I don't want you to freak out, but the pilot is going to be <laughs> in the crowd tonight. I... It, I mean, all I'm going to say is, if if you're looking for the best strippers, they're not at the club at 3 p.m. on a weekday. Deborah Jo Ripper. Deborah Jo Ripper. So, okay, I'm going to skip ahead to where Kramer and the, the cowboy are betting on flight delays. And Kramer gets $3,200 in the hole. Mm-hmm. And he calls Newman. And Newman has a decadent cookie jar. Mm-hmm. Those are Canadian. Oh, yeah. It was he, not the bag. He needs some collateral. Yep. The bag. Son of Sam's mailbag. How much was um, Jeffrey Dahmer in the like pop culture in the 90s? I don't know, but how much was Sam Berkowitz? Also him. <laughs> this, is like, this is like me mixing up the full Monty and Billy Elliot all over again. <laughs> I think Jeffrey Dahmer would be the full Monty. And Sam Berkowitz would be Billy Elliot. Okay. I think that's the tagline of this episode. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I was 10 years old. Mm. You know, I I don't know what the zeitgeist was in the 90s. Sure. But I feel like, where was Jeffrey Dahmer? In New York? Uh, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I haven't I, seen any of the Netflix doc- documentaries, yeah. so I, I don't know. But Son of Sam was, so it probably would be... More relevant Top to of these for them. Yeah, okay, fair. So Jerry's kicked off the plane because the pilot is making the pilot uncomfortable. And he wants to get back to the diplomats club to meet bourbon whiskey or whatever. Bourbon whiskey? Is. Mm-hmm. So driving from Ithaca to like midtown Manhattan. I should have done the airport, but I just said Manhattan. It's four hours. Oh yeah. With tolls. Five hours and 40 minutes without tolls. Mm. I feel like you'd pay the toll. Oh, yeah. You'd definitely pay for sex. <laughs> From Ottawa to Ithaca is four hours. Oh. It's almost not worth it to uh, to fly for four hours. I don't know. It depends. Mm-hmm. We've flown to Toronto a bunch of times. It's true. But that's five plus. Yeah. So we haven't really talked about how Elaine was trying to kill Mr. Pitt. <laughs> because she wasn't. So there was like a misunderstanding where Jerry was getting his toothbrush at the pharmacy and uh, he was just in like a white shirt with a pen in his ear and Mr. Pitt asks him a bunch of medical questions and he gives free advice. I know you mean that it was behind his ear, but I'm picturing just a pen sticking out of his ear. Oh, what did I say? A pen in his ear. Oh, yeah. Isn't that what you call it? Behind his ear? If you ear? have a pen, uh, <laughs> get uh, Mid Journey to, to draw man with pen in his ear. Okay. And if Mid Journey gets what you think will happen, I win. No, but it's a wrong one. It's like how AI can't understand when you're like, if you say like, uh, 
give me a picture of an artist painting a cat and it would like have somebody like painting a pet cat, not like a picture of a cat. Doesn't understand these abstract concepts. Okay, the command is sent, so we're waiting. We're, we're going to wait on the results. I think if you say you have a pen, a pen, <laughs> I'm questioning myself. Now. If you have a pen in your ear, it means a pen behind your ear. No. This is a this is this is a saying. No, it isn't. <laughs> okay, if you just Google "pen in your ear," uh, the fourth picture is somebody with a pen behind their ear. What are the first three? Uh, the first one is a man, picture of a man with a key sticking into his ear. So, <laughs> Well, Midjourney did not understand me. It gave me four men with like Bluetooth headsets. There you go. There's a, there's a non-zero amount of uh, pictures of people with pens behind their ears based off uh, what I uh, Googled. So Katie drives off the road and the bumpiness wakes up Jerry and he goes, what's going on? What happened to the road? Oh, we lost the road half an hour. You told me not to bother you with the small details. And she drives into a pool and everything gets tied up because Mr. Pitt sees Jerry on TV and his estate executor. His lawyer? Well, she refers to her, herself as the executor of his estate, mm. who's still there for some reason. Looking after Mr. Pitt. No Recogni- died. Recognizes this, well, that's this, not that's not their job. Still there. It's all just one day. The executor doesn't do anything until the person has died. Hmm. So what's she doing there? Is she in the will? She's probably a, a family friend or something. I had a question about murdering Mr. Pitt. Yes. Does smothering somebody with a pillow really work? Yes. I don't buy it. You want to try? Sure. Go. Let's go. Of course, it works. I don't, it takes I, a really long time, but it works. There are more efficient ways to murder somebody. When you say a really long time, how many minutes? To murder somebody with your hands takes like four minutes. Yeah. So with a pillow, it's got to be like ten. That's a long time to smother someone. Yeah. There are better ways to do it. Mm-hmm. But it's possible. It, 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 you, you would die. I mean, psh, psh, psh. I was having a conversation today about, um, and and Jerry's behavior made me think of it. I do think that Jerry leans a little bit more into like the aggressive tone, but I think he's trying to be just like assertive and be like to Katie, you're doing this poorly. Mm-hmm. Um, but he just gets like super agitated and it, like it, it goes into the realm of aggression. I don't think it's aggression. I think it's aggravation. Mm, sure. Yeah. He's not threatening her. He's just like, you're terrible at this and, and it's affecting me. Mm. It's not like you're terrible at this and I'm going to smother you with a pillow. Sure, yeah. She is terrible at it because your job as a handler is to handle things, is to remove the need for the person to make choices. Sure, yeah. So, like, if you go to help someone. You don't just ask them what they want to do. You just handle it. You just do it. Yeah. You're like, hey, I made you lunch. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Not like, hey, what do you want for lunch? You can have this, you can have this, or go here. And then the the burden is on the the helpee to decide. Mm Mm-hmm. That's not helping anymore. Yeah. It's like the difference between um, asking someone like, oh, can you do this for me? Versus saying like, oh, can you do this for me by doing X, Y, Z? Yeah. And it's like, one is a help. The other is just instructions. Well, also it takes longer to to tell someone exactly how you want something done. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. The uh, the scene of the restaurant with uh, Mr. Morgan sitting alone is just like- one sitting alone in the middle of the restaurant, like it just looks awkward. Maybe because he gets to eat there for free. True. Maybe they were trying to like, hey, everybody, look at the celebrity. I don't know. This this episode fizzles at the end with Jerry and Barbara making out, and the pilot just like slowly drives by. We 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 have this menacing thing for no reason. Mm. Just That's throws a, Jerry off. It's a bad episode. So they uh, they try to cast a couple of different people f- to play the role of the pilot, and uh, eventually they just cast the guy that delivered bottled water to the office. Oh, uh, I don't doubt he's not an actor. He doesn't move his face ever. He just sits motionless, looking slightly off camera. Mm-hmm. Throw, in the, in really the club, Jerry off. Yeah, in the club, in, in the, the plane. plane, he's not looking at the plane or anything. Nope. <laughs> This window seems awfully close to the plane, too. 
The wings. Where are the wings going to go? I don't know. Maybe the diplomats club is like an overhang. Mm. I don't know. You can get really up close to the to the pilot. Okay, let's stop talking about this bad episode. I don't like it. Okay. Oh, one thing I did like was the emotional montage when Mr. Pitt fires Elaine. That was very nice. So I have some uh, notes about our last episode. Sure. This is the one where Kramer gets the ass man plates. Mm-hmm. We said ass 34 times in the podcast. That's pretty good. It's, yeah, it's decent. Um, and I tried looking up the standard and practices for language, and the only thing I could find online was the Telemundo document. Okay. Um, so now I know which words you can't say on TV in Spanish. Mm-hmm. But it also had an English list. <laughs> Stop saying the words. I'm going to have to beep all these things. Punta. But okay. Cana. <laughs> now you're just saying La Romana. They're just saying cities in the Dominican Republic. Uh-huh. The English list is what you would expect, but I laughed out loud because you can't say balls. <laughs> Unless you're talking about basketballs. Yeah. Unless you're talking about gym class. You going to do another one? Let's talk about Christmas ornaments. So we argued about whether Kramer was getting vanity plates or not. Mm. The Netflix summary says Kramer is issued the wrong vanity license plate. So that makes me think he was expecting vanity license plates. Interesting. But it's just the Netflix summary. So. Yeah. Um, and did you know that actor Ruth Cohen played the cashier at Monk's Cafe in the background of 101 episodes? Mm. She's often listed as uncredited. She is the most frequent appearance aside from the four main actors. Well, yeah, I believe that. And she spoke in three episodes. That's all I had. Um, so two things. The first is something that I just figured out this episode that I forgot to mention. Mm-hmm. I thought I mentioned it now before I forget. So we sometimes question the rankings of the Vulture.com and the Screen Crush. And we're like, did they even like watch the episode? Uh, based off the description of th- and the reasoning behind the ranking for this episode on Screen Crush, he says basically he didn't rewatch any of the episodes. Oh. He's just going by memory and reading like synopsises. Synopsises? Oh. Synopsis. Synopsis? Synopsis. Uh, to try to remember them and rank them. And he's like Well, that's garbage. Yeah, it's it's kinda kinda BS. I don't know how I feel about that. I felt like they were the better rankings until now. <laughs> um, well, we've done it this long. We can't drop Screen Crush now. Okie dokie. The other thing is I tried to Google what the move was. Yeah. And I found a six-year-old article, uh, which was based off a 10-year-old Reddit post. Okay. The, the, the best they came up with was... Uh, Quote, unquote, not particularly enjoyable, apparently. <laughs> you can cut all that out. I but will. I thought it would be funny. So the next episode is called The Face Painter. The Face Painter, yeah. What's it about? You gotta go and support the team. Okay, well. David Putty is a uh, hockey fan. Oh, he's in it again, eh? Yeah. I can't wait. Well, good night. And bon appetit. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?